So in this section of the training course, we're going to talk about the solo self-adjusting clutch. As you can see on this particular clutch, we don't have the adjusting mechanism like we did uh, over on the uh, Easy Pedal adjustable clutch. What we do have is we have this stamp metal tag here. Uh, it says good on one end and says replace on the other. And then you have this plastic tab that's sticking out of the cover. Again, same as the other clutch, as this clutch wears, uh, the bearing is going to move closer and closer to the flywheel or closer to the engine. On the easy pedal clutch, we had to do an adjustment mechanism. On this particular clutch, we have what we call adjusting cams. Okay? This is actually the plastic tab you're seeing protruding out of the cover here, this plastic tab right here. Okay? How these two ramped angled cams work is the bottom one is stationary, this top one is the one that moves and then there's actually a spring that attaches here and to the cover. Okay? So every time the driver pushes the clutch pedal down and that bearing has to go further than a half inch this top cam slides over this bottom cam. Okay? And with these two being ramped angled, it makes the cam thicker and thicker as the cam moves up each other. Making it thicker moves the bearing back out to its half inch location, maintaining that half inch to nine sixteenths adjustment. So as, these cam, as the cams move, this tab moves and it can get over to replace and is an indicator of when to uh, install a new clutch. Uh, again, is if the clutch is installed and set up properly and the linkage is maintains its operation, the solo clutch will maintain adjustment at all times. There are a few conditions to where the clutch may go out of adjustment. We're going to talk about those now. Um, again, we are going to use the same um, adjustment measurement tool that we did on the Easy Pedal with the .490 inches or half inch at the bottom. 9 sixteenths in the middle and then 5 eighths up at the top. Um, in this particular instance, um, the truck may have come in with a complaint of will not start because we can't activate the clutch switch um, or the pedal is hard to push. The very first place we're going to go with any clutch troubleshooting is to measure the distance between the release bearing and the clutch brake. So I put my tool in there and I'm going to see that I cannot even get my half inch section in between the release bearing and the clutch brake. In this particular instance, what has happened is the clutch has went into an over adjust condition, uh, meaning that the top cam moved further than it should have to make an adjustment. Okay. This can happen if the driver hits a dock real hard and depresses the clutch pedal at the same time or makes a panic stop and depresses the clutch pedal at the same time, that shock from the drive line actually makes this top cam skip over the bottom one and over adjust and move the bearing too close to the clutch brake. So since this is a self-adjusting clutch, we can't do an adjustment. What we have to do is a reset. Okay? And there's two parts to the reset. The very first part is we need to get this tab moved over to the new position. Okay. Anytime you're going to move this tab, it must move by hand. You do not want to hit this with a hammer. Uh, it will break off. Uh, though if you break the tab off, it doesn't stop the operation of the clutch. You just will not know when to replace it because the tab won't be sticking out of the cover. But to get the tab over to the new position, we need to have someone depress and hold the clutch pedal as far down as they can and someone try to move the tab over to the new position. As you'll see here, I still cannot move the tab over. Um, there is a tool that you have in your shops called an reset tool. Basically this tool is to get a little bit of a help leverage to help move that tab back over to new. And what we're doing with this tool is we're putting it in the slot next to the tab, the end of the bolt and the slot next to the tab, therefore we don't break off the tab. So again, with someone holding the clutch pedal down to the floor, we're gonna put our tool in here next to the tab and we're gonna try and move it. 
Okay. Again, we still cannot move the tab even with the tool. The problem we have here is in order to release the pressure off these cams, that bearing needs to move at least a half an inch. And as you saw the measurement before, we were less than a half inch. So we need to get this bearing to move beyond the clutch brake so we can get these cams to unlock. In this instance, you have two options. One, you can remove the clutch brake. Okay, this is a uh, test stand here, so we can easily remove the clutch brake. If I remove the clutch brake, it gives me enough clearance now to move the release bearing far enough to where I can move the tab by hand to the new position. Once I'm over to new, I hold it and let up on the clutch pedal. Okay. The other option you have besides removing the clutch brake is removing all the transmission bolts and backing the transmission out at least a half an inch. This will give you more clearance between the clutch brake and the release bearing to be able to release the tension off the cam to push it back to new. So that's part one of the reset. Um, that's part of the reset procedure, step, step one of it. Step two is we're going to need to install the shipping caging bolts that are located right next to the adjusting spacers. Okay, there are four of these around the clutch. So what you'll have to do working from the bottom is you'll have to rotate the clutch around to install these four bolts. This may not be an easy task, but if you forget to do this procedure, the clutch will not continue to adjust. We need to tighten these bolts in a crisscross pattern. And we need to tighten them until they are completely tight. One thing you'll start to notice is as I tighten these, there'll be a gap that's going to start being present between the head of this bolt and this sleeve right here. Once all the shipping caging bolts have been tight and snug, you'll then notice this gap in between the head of this bolt and this sleeve. There is a measurement that you can use a feeler gauge, though I don't use one. Just want to make sure that these bolts are snug all the way down. Now you've completed the second part of the reset. But now we need to now remove all four of those shipping caging bolts to complete it.